In this video, I'm gonna break down how you can land a software engineering job with no experience using four simple principles. My name's Amon, I'm a software engineer and career coach who's worked at Amazon and Shopify. In college, I landed six software engineer internships and started a six-figure full-time job the day after I graduated. And now I've helped hundreds of computer science students and career switchers land amazing jobs in tech. Now, the first thing you need to know to get a software engineer job with little to no experience is to know exactly what you're up against. But before we do that, you need to understand where we came from and how CS became the hottest new field in town. Picture this, it's 1999. George Bush Sr. just got elected president, Home Alone is crushing the box office, and a young person in their 20s has the bright idea to study computer science. Well, luckily for them, there's a huge demand for coders and programmers, but a low supply. You see, if you knew how to code back in the 90s, you could quit your tech job, walk across the street and get hired by a competitor for twice your salary in just a few days. Word started to get around and soon universities all around the world started designing more and more computer science curriculums. Before long, every college had a CS program. Everybody wanted to get into a computer science degree because everyone was told the same thing. This is the most highly sought after, highest paying job that anyone can do, hands down. On top of that, almost everyone was employed because supply hadn't caught up to demand yet. Simply, if you learned how to cope, you could get a job. This gold rush in tech led to something I like to call the computer science industrial complex. Essentially, the CS major itself became commoditized. Now every year, over 100,000 people are now graduating with the CS degree in just the US alone. They're building the same projects, crafting the exact same perfect resume. And this even got worse during the pandemic when we saw a huge spike for demand. And then in 2021, a massive layoff, putting tons of unemployed people back in the market with new grads again. As the job market recovered and money was pumped back into the economy, tech companies started hiring defensively and excessively. Now, this was never gonna last. And with the industry-wide adoption of AI tools and recent layoffs, the demand for software engineers has completely plummeted. And now the situation is completely inverted. We have a very high supply of engineers, but relatively low demand. This means that salaries are going down and competition is going up. And nowadays you have to put in 10 times the amount of work to land a job in tech compared to someone just five or 10 years ago. And because of that, if you have next to no experience, this is not something you can pull off in just three to six months. Getting a job in tech is not a sprint. It's not even a marathon, it's an ultra marathon. See, there are always exceptions, but you should expect at least two to four years of time and effort to land that first job in tech. Because if you rush it, you will not be able to compete. You need to be brutally honest and ask yourself, do you actually want this? Now, the second thing you need to know to land an amazing job in tech with no experience is that it's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove you know. Most people are stuck in that, I just need to learn to code mindset from the early 2000s. You probably think I'm gonna tell you to do something like buy a course online, watch it, and then that's all you need to do. But that's completely backward. And you're gonna see exactly why later in this video. Like I said before, if you want what's in such sort of supply, like a software engineering job, you need to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. A great example of this is actually Warren Buffett. But come on, Warren Buffett is a 94 year old billionaire investor. What the hell could he possibly have to do with this? Just hear me out. Warren and his partner at Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger, were both known for practicing inversion or contrarian thinking. Buffett famously once said, be greedy when others are fearful. And he did just that with this Kroger investment a few years ago. From Q4 2019 to Q2 2020, Berkshire Hathaway purchased over 40 million shares of Kroger at an average of $26 per share. And as a market closed yesterday, Kroger is sitting at roughly $72 per share. That's a 3x return, not bad. Buffett made bold moves by this by monitoring what others were doing and acting completely independently. Instead of only focusing on how to achieve the outcome, he thought about all the ways he might not achieve it. Sound familiar? The same concept can be applied to our scenario. You're asking yourself, how can I get hired with no experience? The problem with the question is the scope. It's way too broad. You're measuring the distance from the starting line all the way to your end goal. Of course, it's gonna feel impossible. Instead, you wanna ask yourself, how could I not get immediately rejected? Now we have something we can work with. Let's say I'm a hiring manager looking at a resume and I see zero relevant experience. Honestly, that resume isn't even probably making it through the ATS scan, but if it somehow does, it's gonna be an instant rejection. But if I see two, three, or even four relevant experiences, now I'm thinking, here's someone who's done the job before, I should at least consider them for a phone screen. Just like knowing what you're up against, this isn't an optional thing. You need to make it look like you've done the job before, even though you never have. This is the only way you're gonna get past the majority of applicants getting rejected by the experience filter. It sounds obvious, but once your foot is in the door and you have that initial conversation, you can start leveraging your advantages as a non-traditional tech candidate. All you need to do is look like you know what you're doing without actually knowing what you're doing. 
And the best way to do that is to seek out experiences with low barriers to entry. Well, how are you supposed to do that? The answer is simple. But first, we need to go all the way back to my freshman year of high school and the one class that changed my life. Now, that class was my first CS class, but it's probably not what you think. You probably think that's where I mastered the fundamentals and got cracked at coding, but the real benefit of that class was it allowed me to take more computer science classes later on. These classes included computer science A and my sophomore year and an Android app development class I took in my junior year. To be honest, all I did during those classes was waste time watching YouTube and doom scrolling, but it didn't matter. All that mattered is that it looked like I was learning as much as I could. At this point, it was my senior year, I had three computer science classes under my belt, which helped me get research at the University of Iowa. Even then, it's not like my CSL just skyrocketed through that high school research. Those experiences gave me enough momentum to get into both the University of Southern California and the University of Wisconsin-Madison for computer science. Keep in mind, I also got a one out of five in the APCS exam. I want to I clearly explained to you guys, I was not some kind of whiz kid gifted student, okay? I was terrible at programming in high school, but because I had a couple of CS classes and some research, I was able to get into some pretty good CS schools and get some initial software engineering internships. The thing is, when recruiters look at your resume and see multiple positions called software engineer or software engineer intern, it has a similar effect on their perception of you. Having those words is like dangling catnip under a cat's nose. See, in the recruiter's eyes, someone else has already validated your skills. This means that the prospect of hiring you carries much less risk. I can't stress this enough. You must make it seem like you already know what you're doing. Still not convinced? In December 2023, the Society for Human Resources Management, or SHRM, published a report titled Matching Applicants and Roles, Finding the Right Fit. Now, the report outlined the results from a December 2022 study in which over 1,030 recruiters completed a survey and took part in an experiment using simulated applications. When recruiters were asked what factors were considered most important in their initial review of candidates, 84% said years of experience and 83% said type of experience. Compared to these factors, only 45% said minimum expected salary, 37% said skilled credentials, and a measly 35% said education level. Dr. Mark Smith, Director of HR and Thought Leadership at SHRM, had this to say about the data's implications. We can conclusively say that recruiters put the most weight on relevant experience. Recruiters try to look at a lot of things when evaluating an applicant, but experience has by far the most value and much more value than education, which is now seen as less valuable than it was in the past. Now, let's be honest, you probably can't just waltz into your high school as a full grown adult and just sit in on computer science classes. That's not gonna work at all. But another thing I did do in high school was I did an unpaid IT internship, which is a lot more in line with opportunities for someone who's completely out of school. What did I do during that internship? Well, I carried broken, heavy computers from the basement of a hospital to a dumpster. That that's it. Yet I was able to still spin it as an IT internship. You can do this too. In fact, when it comes to building your resume as a career switcher and just getting that experience, there are a couple of initial ways that come to mind. The first is to target small businesses or solo entrepreneurs and offer to help them out in some kind of capacity. Take YouTube, for example. In an age where everything is trackable and every click matters, you could reach out to a smaller creator and offer to do data analysis for the channel. You could look for trends in their views, optimize their funnel, or even help manage their budget. You'd be surprised by how many YouTubers and small creators would love to have help with this kind of stuff, and it would be a great way to start building your career. Another way to do this is by reaching out to small businesses and helping them with their older websites. Stick with me here. Tech culture is so obsessed with the latest shiny JavaScript frameworks that we sometimes forget just how much of the internet is PHP, WordPress, and Squarespace. To be clear, you can design beautiful modern websites with those technologies, but most smaller companies are simply not taking advantage of that. Find a few companies with outdated websites and offer to redesign them. Best case scenario, you get paid to do it. And even if they say no, build it anyway. Once it's done, reach back out once you finish the design and offer it to them again for free. Even if they say no at this point, you've still got a great project for a portfolio. On top of that, this is a textbook example of something to bring up during a behavioral interview, something we'll touch on later. In addition to targeted outreach, you should also seek out hackathons, clubs, or other organizations in your area. Hackathons in particular are an outstanding way to start networking and building those projects. Even if you're nervous, trust me, just sign up. It's one of the few ways you can simulate the urgency that comes with writing production level software without any of the real life consequences. Just come up with an idea and build it. At the very least, you'll get a chance to meet other developers in your community and walk away with some 
some cool new project ideas. See, it's simple. If you're consistently putting in effort to find these kind of opportunities, you will see results. It could be slow at first, but you could realistically have three to five one-off tech jobs to small businesses and two to three solid projects under your belt within 12 months. Sure, you'll need discipline and a ton of motivation, but remember, the hardest part is just getting started. Okay, so now that you know what you're up against, you look like you've done this before, and you have enough relevant work to fill a one-page resume. What's next? Now, you need to niche down and refine. Remember when I said you'd understand why starting a course is completely backwards? You're about to find out. Obviously, in order to participate in hackathons and help out small businesses, you will have to look up some kind of programming fundamentals along the way. These could have been with or without AI tools like Claude or Cursor, but that research was done with something specific in mind. You weren't studying, you were building. Think of it this way. Getting better at coding and programming is more like playing the guitar than it is an academic subject. The year you spent doing those hackathons and helping local businesses, that's the equivalent of playing guitar terribly for a year. Your neighbors might not like it, but your skills will have developed so much faster than if you had spent that entire year just reading books about playing the guitar. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. There is no substitute for putting in the work. It's also the main reason why I think you should wait until now to start looking at courses. You'll know what you want to do. Did you like doing data analysis for that up and coming YouTuber? Become a C SQL and Python chat by diving deeper into data engineering? Did you prefer remaking that company's GeoCities website using Next.js and Vercel? Become a front-end savant with a course in your favorite JS framework. Whatever ride you end up taking, just make sure you don't go overboard and buy everything for it on Udemy. Like one of my favorite business people, Alex Ramosi, once said, you'll get more out of reading one book five times than reading five mediocre ones. Now that you've nailed on what you want to focus on, you can start refining your tech stack. See, specificity is a complete game changer for someone transitioning to tech without a CS degree because let's face it, every bootcamp brat is gonna know Python and JavaScript. Both of those languages are extremely popular and there's nothing wrong with them. It's the same thing here. By all means, learn Python and JavaScript, but don't stop there. Software is constantly changing, and part of being a good engineer is keeping up with the latest trends. Obviously, AI and machine learning are super hot right now, so if that's something you're interested in, I would say go for it. However, if I had to pick one language that I think will see a huge spike in demand in the next year or two, it would be Go. If you haven't heard already, Microsoft announced in March that they're rewriting the TypeScript compiler in Go instead of JavaScript. According to Microsoft, this results in a 10x increase in speed and general performance. This is a fairly recent development, but once more companies start seeing the power of Go, demand for devs that know it will skyrocket. We actually witnessed the power of specificity firsthand with one of our students, Thomas Din. See, Thomas had taken some computer science courses before joining our program, but he didn't actually graduate with a CS degree. Now, after hitting a plateau in the job market, he decided to work with us to help him break through. Shortly after we rewrote Thomas's LinkedIn and resume, he immediately started getting DMs from recruiters at major companies like Boeing. In fact, he ended up landing a role paying almost 30% more than his previous contract work in just a few months after joining our program. To his credit, Thomas is a smart, dedicated guy who put a ton of work into his job search. But even he attributes part of his quick success to niching down to know Odoo well. For those of you who don't know Odoo, and I'm guessing that's all of you, it's an all-in-one enterprise resource planning and customer relationship management system designed to help businesses manage things like sales and accounting. I'm not saying drop everything you're doing right now and go learn Odoo and Go, but you need to understand that having deep specificity at this point in the process, as well as unique knowledge and skills are both huge advantages in today's market. All right, at this point, you've proven that you can do this. You have some real world experience and you have a much better idea of what part of the tech industry you wanna work in. You're ready to take the final step which is actually getting the job. But before you start smashing that easy apply button, you need to make sure you have all of the following. A really solid project or two, a polished LinkedIn profile, and a fully optimized resume. A portfolio site would be great, but it's not absolutely necessary like the other stuff. See, projects are super important at this part of your early tech career for a lot of reasons, but they play an especially important role for career switchers during their interviews because you should be 100% prepared to walk through every line of code of the project you're presenting. That's because most tech companies that are willing to hire non-traditional candidates don't care that much about LeetCode style interviews. See, I'm a huge fan of LeetCode. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that LeetCode is one of the most important ways to get a job in tech, but usually it's ultra important for CS majors going for big tech. Those smaller companies who are more open-minded and willing to hire non-traditional candidates care a little bit more about projects and LeetCode style interviews. There's some that do, but they'll usually tell you it's going to be a LeetCode interview before you actually do it. Instead, the companies you should be targeting as a bootcamp brat will typically ask you to do something like a take home assignment, a case study, or a debugging slash paired programming session with a current member of the engineering team. This is good news if you're not a fan of leak code, but the absence of a traditional DSA interview means that your behavioral skills need to be absolutely flawless. 
they're going to have a much larger impact in your candidacy, so make sure you have plenty of stories prepared. You'll want to use the STAR method, which is situation, task, action, result, and if you can quantify your results, it's even better. You can also find lists of common behavioral questions all over the internet, but I'd recommend using ChatGPT or another LLM to help generate some specific practice questions just for you. You can give it the job description, your resume, and give it a prompt like, based on this resume and job description, come up with 10 behavioral questions and answers that best highlight the relevant skills on my resume. You'll want to get comfortable talking through your answers out loud and practice, practice, practice. Remember, this isn't a sprint, it's an ultra marathon. Be prepared to spend the next six to 12 months in pursuit of that final real job offer. Try to set up informational interviews, keep on asking for referrals and focus on high percentage opportunities. Instead of mass applying to every open engineer role that kind of fits your skills, you want to zero in on what makes you unique in the market. You're not a jack of all trades, you're a sniper waiting for the perfect shot. Now, if you've gone through steps one through three and are still having trouble with landing your first software engineer role, I run a school called a Software Engineering Accelerator where we help candidates do just that. Most students find a job within the first three to six months of enrolling, but as long as you commit to the program, we're happy to guarantee you'll find the exact job you're looking for. Click the link below to hear more student success stories like Thomas and see if the Software Engineering Accelerator is the right fit for you. And there you have it. The four principles you need to know to get a software engineering job with zero experience. Is it impossible? Of course not, but it can be extremely difficult. You're gonna have to work harder than effort to break in. But trust me, AI isn't taking your job anytime soon. And as soon as the pendulum swings back like it always does, software engineers will be in demand more than ever. Now, if you're already getting interest from recruiters and want to take things to the next level, check out this video where I show you how I got over a hundred FANG referrals with zero connections. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.